Hello friends of Dermatoscopy. My name is Harold Kittler and this is the third podcast and the last podcast of a series of podcasts dealing with monitoring of pigmented lesions with digital dermatoscopy. In this podcast I will show you mainly cases. Now let's start with this case. This of course is an obvious melanoma clinically, but this melanoma has a history. Here we can see this melanoma when the patient came for the first visit and dermatoscopically then it didn't look like a melanoma, it looks like a nevus. The pattern is brown globules or clots and there is only one color light brown, there are no clues for melanoma. But three years later you see that the lesion changed dramatically, it increased in size and also you see that there is peripheral hyperpigmentation and some black and gray dots. This looks more like a melanoma. Here you can see Five years later, we have a regressing melanoma, and now this lesion looks obviously like a melanoma. Now, some melanomas grow faster than others. Most melanomas grow slow, but some melanomas grow fast. And how can we recognize fast-growing melanomas? Well, usually when we monitor lesions, we monitor flat lesions and we do not monitor nodular lesions. So the really fast growing melanomas, we will not monitor. But also for flat lesions, there are differences between a reticular lesion on the left side and a lesion with clots on the right side, or globules if you prefer. You can see that the increase in size is the same for the left lesion and for the right lesion. The only problem is that the follow-up interval for the left lesion was two years and the follow-up interval for the right lesion was only one year. So we can also say that the right lesion grows two times faster than the left lesion. And usually, and this is the point I want to make, melanomas, and both are melanomas, with a reticular pattern grow slowly and Melanomas with a pattern of clots or globules grow faster than lesions with a reticular pattern. This is also true for Neva. Now let's have a look at some cases. Here you see four melanocytic lesions from the same patient. Which one is going to turn out to be the melanoma? Or in other words, which one is going to change? This one? This one? This one? Well, this one, here all four again, very difficult to tell. Well, it's the lesion in the left upper corner that turned out to be a melanoma after some months of follow-up. You can see significant increase in size, new structures, black dots, and asymmetric growth, which are the hallmarks of a growing melanoma. Here's another lesion. What do you think? Will this lesion grow or not? Will this lesion change or not? Did it change? No. Only the patient's skin changed because it is more tan. But that's it. The lesion itself did not change. This was just a nevus. Now what about this lesion? Do you think that this lesion will change or not? Well, many of you probably will say yes, because there is eccentric hyperpigmentation and you are not sure if this is still a nevus or if it is a melanoma. So we may call this an atypical nevus. But as you can see, it doesn't change. There is no need to excise this lesion. Just a nevus. What about this lesion? Will this lesion change or not? Will this lesion, lesion turn out to be a melanoma at the end, or will it turn out to be a nevus? Very difficult to tell. As you can see here, there is asymmetric increase in size, and obviously this has to be excised and turned out to be a melanoma. What about this lesion? It looks like a nevus. Only one color, light brown, no clues to melanoma, but the only clue is the change over time, asymmetric increase in size. What about this lesion? Will this lesion change? Of course it will change. And here you can see an obvious mistake. This lesion should have never been monitored. Why? First of all, it's non-pigmented. And second, most importantly, you can make the diagnosis of a melanoma at the first visit of the patient. Why? Because you know it's a melanocytic lesion because there are vessels as dots and there are clues to melanoma, which are the white lines. There is no need to monitor this lesion. There's a mistake. And you can see 
This is not a slowly growing lesion. This is a fast growing melanoma. What about this lesion? Will it change? Yes. It will change, obviously, because it is a melanoma at the first visit of the patient. Why? Because there is chaos, it's chaotic, there is eccentric hyperpigmentation, there, are more than one, there is more than one pattern, reticular lines, it's structurals, but there are also clues to melanoma, black dots at the periphery, at the initial visit of the patient. And if you see this lesion, there is no need to monitor it, because you already know at the first visit that this is a melanoma. Obviously, it is changing, and obviously, it looks more like a melanoma after follow-up. What about this lesion? Will it change or not? It's a reticular pattern. If it changes, it will change slowly. But it didn't change at all. It's just the nevus. We call this Clark's nevus, or may call it dysplastic nevus, but no change at all. What about this lesion? Small lesion with some brown dots at the periphery. Not very chaotic. It is symmetric. There is no chaos. Central hyperpigmentation looks like a Clark's nevus initially. But look at the change. Asymmetric increase in size, color change, and you can see also some radial lines at the periphery in the follow-up visit. It's a melanoma. This is a symmetric lesion with a peripheral rim of brown clots or dots, in this case clots. Will it change? Of course it will change. There is a not very traumatic increase in size, but it's a symmetric change. I do not excise these lesions in children and adolescents because they are very common. What about this lesion? It's chaotic. We have brown clots at the upper portion of the lesion, the structural pattern in the lower portion, but no real clue to melanoma. When it changes, will it change rapidly or not? Well, a pattern of clots usually indicates that there is a fast increase in size. Well, here you can see a moderate increase in size, but an obvious increase in size, and it's asymmetric. This is a melanoma, melanoma in situ. What about this lesion, the last case? It's an equal site, and it's chaotic already at the first visit. You can see dots and structures, also some black dots at the periphery, but it's very small, and the clues to melanoma are not very obvious. But you can see, after a certain period of time, the melanoma clues became obvious. You can see an asymmetric lesion, with chaos, white lines, and black dots at the periphery of this melanoma, which it turned out to be when it was excised. So here it is a question whether you should excise this lesion at the first visit or not, but there are arguments, if there are multiple lesions like this, to leave it and to wait until it shows biologic significance of malignancy by increase in size. And if you monitor cases like this, you usually will do no harm to the patient because this was still in size or very thin after monitoring. So the patient will not be harmed. Thanks for watching.